the seas were running six to eight feet. Now, these are small landing craft. They hold 33 infantrymen. And it was going, you know, it was just real rough and we were getting soaking wet and the wind was blowing. It was pitch dark. We couldn't do much except just try to keep yourself from getting seasick. Two or three inches of vomit all over the floor. Everybody was throwing up. And the guy right behind me threw up all over my back and it went down my shirt. I, I just got deathly sick and uh, I would vomit in my helmet, wash it out, throw it out, and then vomit again. We took off from where we were holding and went in as fast as we could. Once they were all loaded, we headed full speed toward Omaha Beach. Here in Normandy, the rescue began. Here, the Allies stood and fought against tyranny in a giant undertaking unparalleled in human history. It was cold and wind was blowing. And I could see the pulse, the, you know, explosions pulsating on the beach. We had one boat to the left of us that was hit, went on fire. And I remember seeing one of the guys jump overboard on fire himself, even his shoes were burning. And I could see that one of the landing craft to our right had already touched down and the ramp was down and, and more it was catching it off from both sides. You know, machine gun bullets were ricocheting off the sides of the front. And they said, do not attempt to land at Vierville. The casualties are 95%. So when we got close enough to the beach, the coxswain says to me, drop the ramp. And I froze for a few seconds because I didn't want to die. And then he said to me, he says, God damn, Davida dropped the effing ramp. So I had no choice. I dropped the ramp. The machine guns opened that fire. They dropped the ramp. We could see the machine gun in front of us, firing at us. Germans had zeroed in on these boats. When the ramp went down, they were getting hit. There were me and five men got off of it, and a shell hit it and, and killed the rest of them. At dawn on the morning of the 6th of June, 1944, the air was dense with smoke and the cries of men, and the air was filled with the crack of rifle fire and the roar of cannon. First man off the boat went off the middle of the ramp, and that thing was going up and down like this, and a surge from the rear, and it just crushed him. Everybody, instead of going off the middle of that thing, they started going off the edge and some going off the sides. We uh, hit the beaches and we were in about eight or ten feet of water. We landed up with water right up to our chins. We hit that water, you jumped over the boat, they were shooting at you. A lot of the guys jumped over the sides of the boat. When we got to the beach, it was just plain out and out hell. The whole uh, German army, it was it seemed like, opened up on us. Machine guns were the worst. And I told my number one gunner that I was going across and for him to follow me. And so I took off running as hard as I could go. And I was going as low as I could. There were artillery shells coming out into the water and there was always machine gun bullets and things like that flying around from different directions. You know, they had, we were under a lot of crossfire. They had barbed wire, they had everything they could to block us, to slow us down. Hell, the barbed wire came right down to the edge of the water. I didn't even have a pair of wire cutters. Numerous pillboxes there were sitting up in those hills, camouflaged, we couldn't see them. All of us were young and we were afraid, but you know, courage overpowers fear. We were told not to stop and then help people get, we wanted to get across that beach. I know people were getting hit and dying right there in front of my eyes, but we were trained to get off that boat and go forward. I can smell the ocean and feel the seasickness. I can see the looks on his fellow soldiers' faces, the fear, the anguish, the uncertainty of what lay ahead. And when they landed, I can feel the strength and courage of the men who took those first steps through the tide to what must have surely looked like 
instant death. Men rolling in the surf, uh, all kinds of gas masks and salt jackets and all kinds of equipment. Bullets were flying all around us, even through our sometime bouncing off uh, our helmet. And at the draw where we came in, there was a pillbox up on the hill and one down at the center of the draw, then went up on the hill from there. They, they had me pinned down from both sides. I started squatting down and walking, keeping down as long as I could. Then I got on up in the water by like that and I started running. Now I run on up on the beach and hit the ground. And then hit the ground because the fire was just so damn intense. I could see the tracers going by and zipping by. But because you stood up, you got hit. But the uh, machine gun fire and rifle fire that just went over our heads like a bunch of bees, and I'm talking thousands and thousands of small arms rounds. I got up and ran toward the cliffs, and they were firing at me, and I said, God, what is happening? I, I, I thought we were all going to die. Everybody that tried to run across the beach would get sh shot. We couldn't stay where we were. They figured out, if I stay here, I'm going to get killed. I can't retreat. I'm going to take some Germans with me. And they would start out, and they would say, you just, I mean, the noise was just horrific. They would yell, hey, I'm going. Who's coming with me? Hey, I'm going. And then up they'd get. And over here, two guys would get up. They'd come to the same conclusion. And over there, three more. And pretty soon, a wave of them going up. I was scared to death. But I got up out of, out of that water and started running as hard as I could run. And I ran and ran and ran. It seemed like forever. It was one last row of wire that hadn't been blown yet. There were two Bangalore torpedo men up there who had blown the previous wire, but they were pinned down in a kind of a crevice that they were in. I stuck my Bangalore torpedo under the wire. The next man come along and stuck his in the end of mine. But then he got the, he got the fuse lit. He pulled the fuse ladder and was hit. Just as soon as he pulled that fuse ladder, he was hit. And he died right there. I prayed that God would give me the strength. I asked for the strength to save this man. He died in my arms. Uh, I was holding him and he died there. Because we went on through the wire as soon as it was breached, right? we ran through the wire up and got up into the trenches with the Germans. And we had to go up the hill about probably about 25 yards before we could get into the trenches. We didn't know whether we were going to run into a pillbox up there, run into a squad of Germans in a trench or something. We didn't know. We didn't know whether we were going to run over a, mi walk over a, a mine or not. We just had to, you know, that's the only option we had to go. And that's what we did. The Rangers looked up and saw the enemy soldiers, the edge of the cliffs, shooting down at them with machine guns and throwing grenades and the American Rangers began to climb. When one Ranger fell, another would take his place. They climbed, shot back, and held their footing. Soon, one by one, the Rangers pulled themselves over the top, and in seizing the firm land at the top of these cliffs, they began to seize back the continent of Europe. <laughs> 